It is dangerous for me to buy books and video games. This is because I have a very specific kind of addictive personality where when I start something, I really feel an urge to have to complete it. And that doesn't mean for me that I have to, you know, 100% do it completely, you know, completely like play a video game and do every single little thing that you can do in the game. But it does mean that I need to finish it so that I can say that I've had the entire experience so that I can talk about the entire thing from beginning to end. Very often this happens whether or not I'm actually enjoying myself reading the book, playing the video game, consuming that piece of media. And what that means is that very often I have this completionism for the sake of completionism kind of attitude. And very often that also means that I'm just wasting a lot of time uh, going through stuff that basically I am going to forget later anyway, because the reality is that any book that you read, any video game that you play, you're going to forget like 90% of what you did in it in, you know, a year from now, two years from now, because a lot of the stuff that goes into any media experience is going to be a lot of material that is not that important to you. If you're new here, my name is Adam and this channel is about all the finest in himbo content. That is right, I am here making a video about how many times I am simply too stupid to stop doing things that I don't like doing. As always, don't hesitate to smash that like button to help level up the channel and perhaps to help some other himbo out there to learn the lesson that sometimes it is okay to just quit things that you are not enjoying. I am also generally taking on new online fitness coaching clients. So if you're interested in being the most himbo version of yourself, don't hesitate to reach out via the link below and I will be in touch with you shortly. Ever since I was a kid, I have felt this compulsion to finish books and video games that I've started. And I would go through a lot of them. When I was a kid, I would go to the library. I would get a stack of books so big that I had to put both hands under the bottom of the stack. And then I would have to put, you know, the top of the stack under my chin because, you know, just I would go through like one a day. And so, you know, I'd go to the library every couple of weeks. I'd need to get like 15 books to hold me over until the next trip. When I started something, I felt like I had to finish it because that was the only way that I felt like I could really say that I had experienced something. I could really talk about it with any degree of expertise or knowledge. It wasn't really until I started to get older that I started to realize that other people don't consume media like this. This is just not how a lot of people do things. People read a book, you know, maybe they get halfway through it, they realize that they don't enjoy it, they put it down. Or, you know, they start reading the first book in a series, they realize they, you know, don't like it enough to continue reading the rest of the books in the series, they put it down. I read through all kinds of books when I was a kid, not because I really enjoyed them, but because I felt like I had to complete, you know, like whatever, you know, just arbitrary list of books I had. And that included a lot of very long books and a lot of very boring books. I read through basically all of the Russian classics at one point. I read through all of Lord of the Rings. I read through all of In Search of Lost Time, which is the longest traditional novel in existence. And of course, I read through that and I forgot 90% of what happened in that book because it is so freaking long and there's so much filler material in there. And let's be honest, it's very, very French. But I also started to realize at a certain point that a lot of this was not making me happy. It was not actually enriching my life. A lot of the stuff that I thought that I was getting out of these books, I was not. I once bought the first three books of the Shannara series, which are basically just a fantasy novel series that was explicitly just like kind of a knockoff of Lord of the Rings. Like that was pretty obvious. <laughs> like that was, you know, they were, they were, you know, there were no, they were not hiding it at all. It was just basically like, yeah, this is a knockoff of Lord of the Rings that I made. And, uh, and I read the first book and I was like, I hate this, but I now feel like I have to finish the other two books in the original trilogy so that I can say that I have read all of the Shannara books so that I can talk about them intelligently and be able to, you know, have a discussion about it and be like, oh yeah, I've actually read these books. Spoiler alert, I read through all of them. I was absolutely miserable the entire time. It took me forever because I was constantly like, you know, like when you don't want to do something, you start doing it, then you put it down, you start doing it, you put it down. It takes a lot longer because you're trying to force yourself to do something that you don't really want to do. I wasted a lot of time and mental energy doing that. And guess what? I don't remember almost a single thing that happened in any of those books because I hate those books. I did not enjoy the thing that I was doing. And I don't know why I forced myself to do that. And, you know, and I like talk to people at the time where I'd be like, yeah, I'm reading these books. I hate them. I'm still reading them. And they would be like, why are you doing that? And I would go, I don't know. Aren't I supposed to finish the things that I start? 
It was a very uncomfortable question because I realized I don't have to finish the things that I start. Other people just sometimes have healthier relationships to the media that they consume than I do. They have more time to do things like reread books that they actually like, or, you know, just like not have to compulsively read things. So I tried to make a conscious effort to be more like that, giving myself permission to quit, giving myself permission to say, you know what, I'm really not enjoying, I'm really not getting much out of whatever it is that I'm consuming. I don't have to keep doing that, I can just stop. I also discovered something else as I got older, which is also that when you are consuming media, very often I find that yes, it does make me happy to do so, in the short term, but in the long term, it's not really going to benefit me or make me feel more enriched. There are lots of video games, for example, that I find really fun, that I really enjoy, that I would say are a crucial part of my life and are an important experience that I had. But at the same time, you know, it's like looking back on it afterwards, you know, was it worth investing all of that time into it? Do I really feel enriched in the long run from having done it? And the answer is maybe not as much. Yes, it was fun, yes, it was enjoyable, but it was mostly just a way of spending time and keeping myself entertained and relaxed. So while it did make me happier in the short term, it maybe didn't make me happier in the long term, and this was time that I could have spent working on other things that maybe would have given me more enjoyment, you know, not just in the short term, but also in the long term. In general, I do get a lot of relaxation out of putting practice towards things like learning new skills, learning new languages, exercising, things that I really enjoy that I also at the same time see that it really adds up in the long run. It really means that I'm not just getting that short-term relaxation or enjoyment effect, but it's also something where it is building up towards some kind of future thing that I enjoy as well. Books and video games and other media are ultimately at the end of the day designed to be entertainment. Yes, you can learn things from them. Yes, they can enrich you in the long run, I would say that I certainly learned quite a lot of things from just consuming compulsively so many books and video games as a kid. But at the same time, again, there's a lot more stuff that you could be doing instead. And there are diminishing returns to, you know, say, playing countless hundreds of hours of World of Warcraft, which is a thing that I did and which took up a lot of time in my teenager years, my 20s and so on, that again, enjoyed it at the time, really enjoyed that experience, would I have been better off if I had maybe done something else at that time? Yeah, probably. And I would probably be happier now that I had done other things instead. So I do find that it is dangerous for me to pick up books and video games and new media because once I do, I know that I'm going to feel that compulsion to finish it and I know that ultimately that's going to tr detract from my life a little bit in the long run. A really good example of this is Elden Ring. I love Elden Ring. That was an amazing game. I put 150 hours into it. That is 150 hours that sucked all of the life out of everything else that I was doing around that time. I didn't have time to do all kinds of other things because I was so busy just putting hours into Elden Ring with every spare moment of my life. It took a lot out of me. Basically nowadays, any video game that's longer than about 20 hours it's just like, oh my God, when does this end? I am an adult, I don't have that much free time. I did make a video a while back about how a couple of years ago I made a really intentional choice not to basically purchase or play any new video games for a month. And it really did help out quite a lot. It really gave me a lot of clarity and understanding. I thought that I would be a lot less happy not having video games to play to keep me entertained. What I found instead was that I just found other ways to entertain myself and I also had a lot more free time to just kind of focus on side projects and really enjoy those side projects and make progress on them uh, as compared to, again, when all my time was getting sucked up by video games, all my spare time. Of course, I still am going to do things like pick up major video game releases that I am excited about, but those are fewer and further between. As I get to be older, I get to be a bit more jaded. I've just seen a lot of what there is to see, you know? It's like, I don't, I'm not gonna get as excited about lots of new games that come out simply because I've seen so many similar things before. And unless it's like a big cultural moment, I realize that, you know, maybe it's not worth sinking all of my time and effort into it if I'm not going to, you know, feel enriched by it afterwards. I still buy a couple of books each month. Typically I go through, I would say about three or four books a month. But at the same time, it's something where I'm trying to stick towards nonfiction books, 
things where I really feel like I learned something or like I actually come away from it enriched a little bit, having some kind of lesson or a takeaway that I can then apply to my ordinary life. And I do have to say that while, again, this means that I am reading a lot less, playing a lot fewer video games, I have a lot fewer things to keep me distracted and entertained, I am pretty much just happier like this. I am pretty much just happier not having to feel the sort of weight of that compulsion hanging over me. And, you know, basically the way that I have learned to cope with that compulsion is just to avoid the things that trigger it in the first place. So again, it's dangerous for me to buy books, video games, and other kinds of consumptive media for me to entertain myself with. So that is all for this week's video. I hope that you liked this video. As always, don't hesitate to comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see in future videos. Subscribe, smash that like button, that notification bell. Share this video with all of your weird little friends who like the same weird little things that you do. And I will talk to you all next week. Have a good one.